I'm going to do is talk about four talks today. I'm going to talk, blocking the space might run into the next one. But the other one might end a little shorter, and then we can end. I'm just going to keep on going. I'm passionate about what I do, I believe in what I do. If you got questions, <laughs> raise your hand, we'll do our best to answer. Okay? We'll do our best, all right? Lock in space. What are we going to talk about here? We're talking about linemen, technically, going out and having to learn how to adjust the people in space. It's not easy. It's not easy, all right? I mean, you think about it, all right? When you have something that's really big, it's a little harder to move, okay? All of a sudden now, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like taking a tank and chasing a motorcycle. Yeah, you lucky. Got it. Here's how it has to happen. That tank's got to go full speed. He got to go full speed. And the back, the back is going to have to come set that block up. But what I'm telling you is you cannot slow down. You cannot slow down. If you slow down like this, that thing's going to either get farther away or it's going to move in a different direction and you're just not going to hit. Remember, have you ever heard some shots of feet trying to uh, run full speed out as fast as you can and let the back set it up? The back's not setting up to get a new back. The back should be running right behind to help set the damn thing up. Okay? Now, here we go. Let's talk about the, the particulars of it, okay? Alright. I stole this thing. Really? I stole that one. Okay. I took this line because I said, hey, space. All right. One small step for a player, one large step for the team. You know what? We, this is what we have to learn how to do. I'm going to take you in the drill work. We'll break this thing down into a small step. Okay? So that you can get it done. All right? And the drills I'll show you in a second. Actually, it's just one really basic drill. All right? Next, you gotta learn, you gotta learn how to teach the drill. So when I put the drill up here and talk about it, ask the question. Ask the questions you want to answer. Okay? Because sometimes when I write these things up, I don't always cover. I do not always cover. Okay? Because I get guys calling me or emailing me saying, hey, I didn't really get this. Okay? You gotta teach with style. What style are you? What style are you? Tell me something about teaching style. Have a little flair in your teeth. Raise your voice every now and then. Roll your voice every now and then. Throw it back. I don't give a shit what you do, but teach with a little style. Have a little presence about you. Hey, hey, you know what? Think about when you were in math class. I worked with a, a, a teacher in math class. What happened in math class? You sat there, and that guy was as monotone as he could get, and you were going, I hate this freaking teacher. Think about that when you're coaching. What do you think those players are thinking? Hey, don't put the son of a bitch to sleep. Your job is to keep the weight, keep the focus, and keep the move. So, he's a little stop. That's our motto at, uh, at, at USC also. We're going to do it with a little flair, all right? Okay. Drills and emphasize what you want, okay? You can be creative. Okay, here. I want drills that will help me teach players in space. So what do I need to do? First of all, I need to move people around and I need to make my players react to it. Let me tell you something. You want them to be successful in the room. Successful in the drill. So you gotta design the drill so they have a certain amount of success, not something that they fail at. Okay? Alright? Now, before we get into it, how many guys have a screen here? Oh, good. That makes you so good. Scream! You're a good coach! <laughs> I've met so many of those son of in my life. Scream and yell. Hey, listen, it ain't about screaming. It's not about screaming, okay? I'm just making a point. You do You do things well. One of the best teachers I ever had was a guy named Hal Allen. I didn't play for him. He was a defensive line coach. He used to whisper in everybody's ear. Whisper! Now what are you guys thinking right here? Huh? What'd you whisper? I told him, yeah, hey, it's already. 
hey, this is already driving you freaking guys nuts. <laughs> you already now. This was his point. You whispering kids here? What does that mean? That means that he's got to have players asking what the hell you said. You know what? When he tells them what you said, he told how Al told me that means more to those guys than what you said. Why? Because you ain't 19 years old. You're not 18 years old. You're not 16. You're not 15. You're some old white, black, Mexican, Puerto Rican, whatever you are. Old dude. That's what you are. Okay? That's why, you know, hey, we're peace peace in our staff the other day. He said, all right, what's traffic? I said, what's what? What's traffic? Hey, he likes to pick up the lane on the players so that he just stays on himself. So when I told him something, he now is going to go sit there. He's not going to go in the back. This player right here is going to say, hey, what did he tell you? Tell him. Well, you don't have to tell him nothing. <laughs> One morning, you're drinking your coffee. One morning, you're drinking your coffee, you're reading the sports page. You read it just like this. Just go with it. Hey, uh, I've got it now, and she goes to the five step. Yo, turn it back. He said, then, wait a week. On Friday. Take the paper. Put it down. Walk around to the side of the table. <laughs> First Friday, that weekend, was just like every other weekend. Next weekend? <laughs> is far greater tool, far greater tool than the yelling and screaming. This guy coached Eddie Edwards, Ruben Carter, Jerome Brown. Uh, but they were all from the University of Miami. And, and he, the guy never raised his voice. And I tell the story because hey, I asked myself, well, isn't there a time that you really got to sit? You're still thinking about what I said. <laughs> Time, Christmas time is a heavy time for shock and all that stuff. And I had an opportunity where I was taken by, uh, he said, uh, I saw a little girl being taken by, excuse me, I'm just getting this story straight, a little boy being taken by her mother into the into the toy store. The little boy said, I want to, I want the truck, I want to have a truck on the truck. What do you think she said? What do you think she said? Right before Christmas, what do you think she said? No. Now Christmas is coming, no. The kid throws tangles on the floor, screaming and yells. Well, no one knew how to quiet down the kid, so Sam says, let him go. He gets a piece of candy and says, here, would you like some candy? He says, oh, I want the truck, I want the truck. So she's a little upset because, you know, she's a salesman, she can't sell corn, and the kid's screaming. So the first thing she does is what? Goes against her, her uh, boss. Her boss comes over and tells her, boy, hey, listen. I'm going to get a truck for Christmas. He says, no, I don't want the truck for Christmas. I want it now. Well, that wasn't working. So they called the uh, uh, company psychologist down. He comes down and says, little boy, listen, you're being a bad boy right now. You're being a bad boy. And if you're a bad boy, not only do you not get the truck, you might not get anything for Christmas. But if you're a good boy, not only do you get things for Christmas, you're just like that. Kids kept screaming, kept yelling, and wanted to fight. So they all looked around and saw Santa. He said, Here, help us out. Santa leaned over, whispered to the kid who's laying on the ground, flailing his arms and legs, whispered in his ear. Kid jumped right up, grabbed his arm and legs, quick crying. Everything was good. So what was Santa's secret? 
Everybody want to know, what did you tell me? He said simply this, the only great trials are the great your fucking arm. <laughs> Is, hey, you can get your message across any way you need to. If you have to whisper in their ear to give them the message, fine. But here's the other point. The person's dignity is not challenged. You didn't challenge that kid's dignity. You didn't embarrass him in front of all his teammates and other coaches. You didn't stop call him out in front of everybody. Come over here, right? Now, these guys go, hey, tell me what he said. Tell me what he said. You know what they're going to do? Yes. Private. 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 Coach. There we go. Thanks. So. That player feels better about you because you treated him the right way. Not the only way, coach. Don't get me wrong. I'm just telling you guys another method to get what you want, to get closer to your players so that your players understand. You and they will know that you care about them if you can do this. Why? You're creating a moment of engine to see what you're playing. No, this isn't broke back, whatever. <laughs> this is about enjoying coaching and getting the most out of your play. Okay? Alright, so everybody got that. Alright, so you can scream it, you can yell it, you can sell it, which is what we do every day. Okay? Teach it. Communication is critical. If you don't communicate what you want the drill, how you want the drill, the drill's not going to be good. Okay? So communicate what you want, how you want it, and then take a couple of uh, uh, catchphrases. Anybody know what a catchphrase is? <coughs> Anybody know what when I say catchphrase? Anybody know what that is? Nobody knows what a catchphrase is? Yeah. Well, uh, lose ground to gain ground. Yeah, there you go. Lose ground to gain ground. That's a catchphrase. But that's a bullshit one, though. I got <laughs> but, you understand? That's a catchphrase. Eyes in your gap. Catchphrase. Hold the white depression. Catchphrase. Eyes on your target. Catchphrase. In other words, what you're trying to do with catchphrases is this. When you teach that every day, they hear the same shit every day. Shoulders square, eyes on your target. Shoulders square, eyes on your target. They hear the same thing every day. So we go to this drill, they go, yeah, shoulders square, eyes on my target. So now, now you got them saying. Now it's like two more, he's going shoulders square, eyes on my target. You understand what I'm saying here? Does it make sense? Shoulders square, eyes on my target. Shoulders square, okay. Now, what you're doing is, is by teaching them this way, you continue with the catchphrase, you're not complicating the drill, you're simplifying the drill, you're making it simple for your communication, simple for their understanding. Therefore, you get what you emphasize. You get what you emphasize. You get shoulders square, you get the eyes on the target, okay? You need to evaluate how you're doing it. Evaluate how you're doing it. Who says you're doing it right? I want to know who says you're doing it right. Who says it's a good drill? Does it meet the standards of what you want to get done? Now, how does this have to do with blocking in space? I can't teach you blocking in space unless you know how to teach the drill. That's the most important part. It's the most important part of understanding how to teach drills. I believe that I'm good at what I do because over the years I've done this, 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 and I'm doing this better than I've ever done. I always evaluate how that drill's going. I evaluate whether or not I'm doing a good enough job. Because if I'm not, then I try to make it better. Do I have enough stop? Do I have enough stop? Is my enthusiasm Is my energy good? Am I coaching like I'm tired? If you're coaching like you're tired, you shouldn't be coaching. Should not be coaching. They got to feel you. They got to get your energy, all right? All right, here we go. Love your players. Now, nope, this is just simple real quick. I'm going over this real fast. I'm moving on to other stuff. Let them know you care with your words and your actions. Help them help themselves. What does this mean? Don't always do everything for them. Show them what they need to do and then let them do it. That's the only way kids get better. Okay? It's the only way you, you do it with your own kids, do it with your players. Alright? 
Give them ownership. By that I mean this. Every now and then you're going to say, you're going to sit in the damn staff room for three hours and somebody's going to be going, well, I don't know what they're called, but let's call it this. No, I don't want to call it that. Hey, bullshit. Ask the frickin' players. They're the ones doing it. You know what? You get better answers from them anyway. They're the ones doing it. They're the ones that come up with a nice little catchphrase. You know what they'll do? They'll call it out like it's like they've been doing it. <coughs> Why? Because you gave them ownership. Now all of a sudden, it's more important for that scheme or that blocking uh, call to work because you gave them a little ownership of what it was. Okay? And kind of, I, I always used to refer to this. You know, the backside block where you got to work the tackle's got to work the three technique, and the, and the guard's got to work up to the linebacker. Well, my tackle in Kansas told me I can't do this. You can't do this. I can't do this block. I said, well, shit. We well, can't do it. And he goes, that's a bit. I said, listen, you know what, Chris? I don't give a shit what you call it. I want it done. We called it Sally. That's what we called it. It was always called Sally. All right? I don't know how it's called Sally. That's what they call it. I five Sally's called it. All right. Maybe I get out of practice now, and all of a sudden he puts his hand on the ground, and I hear him yell, bitch. And he does it perfect. <laughs> First time. I said, hey, I learned something right there. He took ownership. He got called bitch. Now that's good. Unfortunately for me, though, it created another problem. Coach Mason walked over next to me. He said, she is, you know. <laughs> I said, who? My wife, Sally. <laughs> I said, Coach, I don't really know that they were trying to communicate that particular thing. And he goes, I don't know, but whatever it is, you said, you're going to be a he thought that I was the one to bring that shit up, and I said, hey, you know, she's a bitch. Hey, that's me. Hey, we're changing Sally to bitch. So, anyway, it cost me my job, but he did have a few words for me. All right. Your, fun, your run game fundamentals are forward, targets, leverage, and finish. Those are your run game fundamentals. I don't care what else you see. I don't care what else you see. That's what I do. That's what I do. Somebody asked me, well, what is your what is your philosophy? My philosophy simply is this. Forward fundamentals and finish. That's what I always say. Forward fundamentals and finish. Why do I say forwards first? Forward, you can't get in the proper place at the proper time unless you've got what? Proper footwork. You cannot get in the proper place at the proper time unless you've got proper forward. It don't matter about the finish. It don't matter what. If you don't know how to get and you can't get there, you won't get there. <laughs> Consequently, you hey, you stop on film it looks too good. And then, hey, my coach rule, my stuff on film it looks too good. People go, oh, well, why isn't it looking good? Is that the way you coach it? No, that's not the way I coach it. Well, then why, why, why are they doing what you want them to do? That's your signature. You, you guys watch your film, that's your signature. You're writing your signature. If your check is good, what you see on film will be good. You might not have the best players, but they got good forward, good targets, and they're and they're trying to finish. Then you're doing a damn good job of coaching. And I can see it on film. I see it all the time. Hey, wow. These guys well coached. This is the coach. Okay. That's what I see. That's what I see. It's your signature. Make sure you, you get this stuff. Now, if you have good forward. Then you get a good target. If you got a good target, it all leads into what? You can finish, okay? You can finish. Yeah, which emphasize the most. All right, you must pay attention to detail. Have a pay attention. You guys got this? Your signature's on the bench. Hey, I know I went through that quick. I want to move along to the drill, all right? Your signature's on the bench. You're either coaching or allowing it to happen. How many times did you tell them? How many times did you tell the guy? That doesn't mean shit to me. That means shit. You tell me, oh, I told the guy 15 times. Now, what does that mean? Tell me what that means. That tells me two things. Either you can't communicate or he can't listen. Right? That's what it tells me. So don't tell me the coach how many times you told him. Just get the job done. I got my daughter in a three-point stance. 
seven months. She did not speak a word of English. For, she wasn't even walking yet. I got her a three point stance and had her hand back. <laughs> uh, she didn't understand the cadence yet, but still. My point is, hey, that's. That can get done. You don't have to. Hey, communication can happen. Communication can happen. It's like a friend of mine, Mary, he told me the other day, he said, you know, I finally understood my wife. I said, what do you mean? She told me the difference between choice and choose. And I said, what is the difference between choice? He said, well, choice, you have options. Choose is something you wear on your feet. <laughs> anyway, communication, guys, it's all about communication. Get it done. Now, I know some of you guys think this is bullshit. It's not. I got a picture to prove it. I got a picture to prove it. But let me tell you how it happened. So maybe you understand it. I didn't go to, I'm not a psychopath. Okay. What happened is simply this. I took my daughter, she was sitting on my lap, and I was drinking Long Island iced tea. And I realized at this point I probably should kind of quit because you know, we're sitting in the backyard, and the grass is a little long. And I thought, like, oh, you know, I'll let my daughter down and play the grass. Well, when you put a newborn down in the grass, she put her feet down like this, and she sank down like this, and she put her hand up like that. And I went, quick! That's how I got her to three points <laughs> And then I said, good job. Very good. That's so good. And guess what happened? She did this a lot. Because she knew that I liked it. She knew that it was a reward for us. And I was going to get clapped. I can see you every time she did it. And my wife says, my God, what are you training her to do? I said, this is pretty cool, though. <laughs> she said, if it was a boy, yes, but it's a girl. Okay? So my point is, hey, I, I didn't go crazy trying to teach. I just all of a sudden saw it. He got excited about it, clapped. From that point on, she wanted to show me three points in. Yes, any questions? All right? Okay. Raise your spirit, do not crush it. All right? Why in this drill? What's the purpose? Major point of emphasis? Getting it. Drills that don't make sense. Don't do drills that don't make sense. I've, I've kind of hit that already. Drills that make sense. Put report, shoot, pull, drill, block. Okay, here we go. I think I, hold on. Hold on. Okay, here we go. I screwed up, guys. I laid with this wrong. Alright, well, I wanted this to be in the front. Hold on. I'm going to get you to. And this one right here. Okay. I'm going to get you this through right here. Here we go. I screwed up. I put the title on, on a different uh, deal. I was wondering why I kept going into a certain area. Now, this is how I teach the pull drill. Alright? The pull drill. And this is how you're going to teach them to block in space, all right? How are you going to get it done? All right. The first thing is this. Let me tell you something. Before we go to screen, the first thing is that we're about screen. We'll cover that in a second. Screen is a little bit different, but not that much different, okay? All right. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to line the guy up on this cover right here. Let's just say there's another cover over here, all right? These guys are all going to pull proper forward. Let me tell you something about pulls. I don't really care. I don't care about how they get out of it. Why don't I care about how they get out of it? Can anybody tell me why I don't care about how they get out of their pull? Anybody know? Huh? What? Well, there's a couple of them. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's a good answer for it. For the, uh, the method, I don't really care. But why don't I care? Because they're never engaged with anybody in the block. I mean, they don't ever have anybody uh, assaulting them or pushing them. Hey, when they're pulling, they're behind the line of scrimmage. So I do not line them forward. If one guy comes out like this, if one guy comes out with this and a crossover, that's fine. If they hop back and then cross over, that's fine. If they open their hip like this and then cross over, that's fine. You see? You have to cross over in order to do what? 
keep your shoulders square. Yes. Yes, that's right. In other words, hey, some some white guys like this, they hop and cross over. One of them does that. I mean, I mean, Yes, like this. No. Outside leg. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they do that too, right? Yes, they do that too. All they do is put their hand down like this. They just step like this and go out. Yes. I mean. One guy looked at me and goes, we don't care. Well, the other drunk said he told me we had to open our hips and go outside. I said, hey, shit, bullshit on that. I ain't even worried about that. The only thing I'm worried about is you have your shoulders square and that you I can't have your eyes in your car. Because I can spend hours trying to teach you how to get out of a certain way. And you know what? I have literally put all the different pulls on a reel and time. Whichever the fastest player. There's no difference in the time. It's so minute you can't get it. It's like that. It's like those bullshit computers. Penny and shit. Frick. I get it. Looks just like the frickin' last computer I got. You guys, yeah, penny chip. You didn't know what a freaking penny chip is. <laughs> you guys are all excited about it. Mel, is it a good computer? Yeah. It feels fast. You know what? It's so fast you can't tell the difference. You can't tell. I got a computer. I should tell you about this. We really can't see you. You can't see Hey, you know what? I want to see this shit. I tell the players, don't tell me about what. Hey, let, let me see it. I want to see it. Okay? So, when I, when I looked at all this stuff, I found out that's not that important. The only thing that's important is the crossover. Because that keeps your shoulders square. Okay? So we good? All right, next. Shoulders square. All right, next. Eyes on the target. Now, you realize these guys are pulling. There's cone, 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 cone. These are right here. You don't have to have anything right here. Nothing. Nothing. They just have to pull around this cone. And when they get to five yards, I suggest you always do this. When they get to five yards, then they learn to dip. They learn to dip. Good. Keep running full speed. Let's dip. Got it? Keep running full speed. Got it? Good. Why? Because you have to get left. Now. How you start teaching them to handle things in space is, obviously, you can't block things unless you do what? Keep your eyes on your target. If I gotta look down at the defense man, or I gotta look, coach says that I gotta run on this line out here. You got a player that, hey, you say, well, you gotta run flat down my screen. And he's running down my screen, he's like, hey, you got a bad player. You got a bad coach. Or you got a bad coach. You're the wrong thing. You tell him, hey, release without an angle. That's the only way. Really, don't say down the line of scrimmage. Because hey, all of a sudden, some start looking at the damn line like this. Like that's the front track. Release. You say flat. Release flat. Without an angle. Boom. Okay. No. You. Release. 45 grand, you, please, or whatever. You can tell them. But don't start giving them, like, hey, around the defensive end, around that, you know, this guy. Hey, here's why. They look at that shit. They look at it and they see it, and then here's what happens to them. All of a sudden, they look at you, and all of a sudden, they look up, and they can't adjust, they can't work, they can't get on the down. In other words, just like, you know, driving the intersection, and don't look both ways. Drive in that intersection and don't look both ways. Well, that's a little frightening. Well, that's what you're telling them to do. Drive in here, but don't look. Don't see what's going on. I want their eyes up. I want them to see what's going on. I want them to see their target. Why? Because they got to be able to run over their target. they got to be able to bring force to their target. And you can't do it looking at other things. So this is really critical. You must have your eyes on your target. Okay? Now, here's how we're going to change up the drill. We're going to take these guys. And we are going to move. We're taking right here. 
And we're going to go like this. I'm going to stand back here. I'm going to tell all these guys to pull. When they start pulling, and these guys right here, when I give them the signal, and they're pulling right here, are going to come around right at that point. We're going to the intersect point. Okay, so you're going to stand like this. And tell everybody to breathe. Just like that. I want all those guys holding shields to run where? Right here. So when they come around here, and that guy has to be nice and tight and fit that guy up good. Now, how can it be nice and tight and fit that guy up good? But roll like this. I see, hey, he's tight, he's tight. I'm tight, tight, tight. You got it? Okay. This guy right here? I want you to run straight ahead. Now he's running right here, he's coming right here, he's got to measure it out. What, hey, whether he can hit the guy front up or he's got to kick the guy up. <laughs> run up here. You can, you can slide him across here. But the idea is, is you're getting a player used to doing what? Looking at his target. We want him to see his target. Okay? And, and you got to mimic what defensive players do. Defensive players shove like that, get him to shove. He's coming forward like that, and get him to do that. If he's, you know, blitzing, get him to blitz. If he's uh, just hanging there, holding the point, get him to do that. But the point is, is get him to do what you see every day. Okay? Now, you know. You're, you're, you're a center. I'm a flat center. You got to be careful. Go ahead. 
Carry it if I have to, like this. It's number two. My shoulders. All right, now I want to lose. Last set. Go. You guys inside. I want to lose a guy. You understand? I want to lose it at one point. But you can't just go bam, bam like this. That's so good. You want to lose it. All right. So now go. I lost right here. I'll run flat from my position. Flat. Okay. No angle. I will run to get an intersect point. First guy outside. I'm running to get an intersect point. That's what you do. You run to get an intersect point. When do you know? Oh, you'll know. He will come running up like a bat out of hell because he sees it coming. Or, if he's chicken shit, just like all those corners are, he will hang back there and go, oh shit, who's this freaking big ass coming after me? Okay? This is not in my job description. <laughs> You do is you run out there at the intersect point. Once you have closed the intersect point down, which is a field thing, I can't tell them how far away and all that kind of shit. You run to get an intersect point, once you realize he cannot beat you here, okay. you now start for his inside line. Once you realize he can't beat you up the field, you start for his inside line. So one, I'm right here, I don't think he beat me up field, now I'm going to start angling for his what? Inside no. That's what you do now. Oh, I've seen that taught. College, pro, high school, all the way. Bullshit. That's how you miss them. Chop your feet down, you're going to miss them for sure. Why? Why? But think of this. If you got a tank, it's running as fast as it can run, okay? And it doesn't have good steering ability, but all it has to do is nick your head. You're dead. You understand? It's just got to nick you, and you're dead. If it slows down, the tank goes. You're gonna flip. Is that even the way that tank gets you when he slows down? If you can jump to right, jump to left, you can circle around his ass and get So you want to run full freaking speed. And the back of the tank's ball should help you out by doing this. Leaning and sitting Some backs have no freaking loop. Why? Because you've lost the order of keeping out a back to set up blocks. Reggie doesn't know about setting up on He doesn't. He has no clue. But I tell my guys, run fast. If you don't, you're going to run up on your ass. Okay? You've got to run fast. I try to get him to the inside zone. You're in the inside zone, you want the guy to do this. And come down there, press it, and read, and find the flow cut. I told Reggie my second practice at USC, slow down. Reg, listen to what I'm telling you. I want you to slow down right here so you can see what's in front of you and press it. Even though you don't see a hole just yet, just press the line of scrimmage. You know what I did? Okay. That's Reg. You tell him to come, he's going to try to do it. So, right when he left, go back in the hole. Coach Carroll said, Pat. Shaking his head. I go, what? Seventeen's been playing a long time. He goes, no, I don't I said, well, what, what's wrong? He goes, you don't ever tell us being bullet to slow down. <laughs> That's not about that. No other way. Fast. So what we did is we told him to over exaggerate the inside zone. So now, you see here, you see Lindell runs like this. Boom, like this. Grant runs like this. He looks like he's doing some kind of thing. He's freaking like this. I'm going, what is all that? And he goes, you wanted me to slow down. I'm trying. I go, holy shit. I said, no. I said, now everybody in the world knows. Why don't you throw your arm up your leg? I'm like, yeah. We're running to me. That's what he did. It was like crazy. But he learned to run better. He started gashing people up the middle like he wanted to. Because he, that was the slow down part. Now, since he's running fast, Behind us, we got to be able to run fast on the guys in the So you got to, now, I'm one of the guys, and I think I'm going to do this. Then throw. Throw at him. Throw at him. And if you miss, always miss on your upfield shoulder. Okay? Always miss this way. If you miss, don't miss this way. Miss this way. 
down here, come with me. Is everybody understanding? The always wrist on the guy on your down from the shoulder. Alright? Everybody got it? Anybody got any questions? <laughs> now, when you're turning up the field on the screen like this, I don't even tell them where to, what, I don't even tell them outside the number or anything. I tell them to cover him up. Run to cover him up. So what I'm trying to do is tell him is to find a track to cover that guy up. Those guys are a lot easier to get. The guys that you go like this, you got the alley on them, and you're turning like this, these guys are the easiest guys to get right here. Because the runner always sets him up. It's the outside guy that doesn't get set up enough. We want the runner to be like this, like he's going to try to get outside and then get up inside. Okay? We just want the defender to think for a minute the ball might come outside because he's been trained so well to do what? Keep what? Keep it in Drive it back to the pursuit. He's been trained that well. So if he's been trained that well, then what do you do? When I'm, when I'm wide out and I got a corner on me, this guy's been trained to jam my ass and, and, and work me in the sideline. Listen, hey, sometimes the best release you can take is a fake an inside release, get him to skip that way and get back to his water. He's been trained to drive your ass in the sideline. That's what he's been trained to do. He's been trained to work your ass in the sideline. So if he's, hey, what you're doing is taking the things that he's been trained to do. That's why, you know what? All of us as coaches, sit back down, fellas. <laughs> All of us as coaches have to know offense and defense. If you're strictly an offensive coach, and you're going to go to coach that defense, you're going to go sit the defense for real back down there listen to how they talk. Okay? And if you're strictly a defensive coach, this always kills me. I'm in pro football. I'm in pro football. I'm going to draw it up real quick. <laughs> Pro football, and I'm holding up this car. They want to run the power. They want to run the power. Wait, this is pro football. This is a top of our profession. They want to run power. So what is wrong with this drawing? They had these two guys blocking and him blocking a strong safety. They had this guy coming right here and blocking air out there, just whatever was out there. They had the guard getting his ass kicked by the Sam. I guess, and I said, I said, who drew this guard? The guy said, well, I said, you want power? He said, yeah, I took the guard. Went in there, I said, all right, guys, we're gonna run power. Everybody's got inside gap, the backside, and I'm back guard, and pull the back and pick up. I asked him afterwards, I said, show me that play. I want to see that play on film. He showed it to me too. The freaking fullback is coming out like this, and he realizes he's not tight enough, and he just said, screw it. He kept going. The tight end pushes like this. He sees a strong safety, ran a strong safety. He's supposed to be on the freaking wheel. And the guard's looking at the, for the mic and runs into the sand. And that son of a bitch screwed all up. And they're practicing it. Pro football. You know what? He knows. Hey, he knows how to line that three technique up. He knows when that uh, five technique goes. He knows what everybody's responsibility is. He doesn't understand the offense. He never ran a power play in his entire life. Know what they do. You can't 
teach good drills. You can't learn stuff if you don't understand defense. I sit there a lot of times in the defensive meetings just so I can hear him talk. Okay, well, he's got contain on this one. He does this. You know what this guy does? I was listening to uh, Mike Stoops up for the Reno Clinic, and he's talking about a crash stunt. He's talking about a crash stunt, and he's telling, well, listen, the corner comes, and as he comes, if the tackle turns his shoulders away, then he runs for the quarterback because it's a what play? Well, the tackle turns his shoulders away like that. And it's a boot pass for a Navy. That's right. So now he's not going to turn that corner, comes right from the quarterback and gets a kill shot. If the tackle and shoulders are this way, like this, coming up the field, he stays flat as he has the D gap. Understand? Okay. So I'm sitting here listening to that shit, and I'm going, hey, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And now I'm going to run the boot which way? <laughs> yep. You know what? Some of you guys might say, what hurts this? What hurts that particular play, guys? What hurts this? What problems do you incur on this play? If you ever ask me that question right there, you got no chance of finding out. None. For God's sake, how stupid do you think I am? To let everybody in the world know this is how you stop it. This is how you screw me up. Huh? I'm not that stupid. So don't ask me. If you have a phrase that you better figure out a way to say it in such a way that, hey, I don't know that you're getting that answer. <laughs> okay? Does everybody understand that? I mean, hey, you think about it. Why would you tell somebody, I swear to God, I don't like it, or it's your own staff room. If I ever go like this, well, you know what caused us a problem? Well, it was a bubble bucket. Well, you know, we're going to practice. God dang, there it is, that day. <laughs> I feel like most of them, most of them, including the ones on our staff, are fucking assholes. <laughs> I don't like my job to be that hard. I don't want to have to work on this blitz and that blitz and this turn and that turn and all this shit. I don't want to. That's funny if a little shit let me knock your ass right off the football. And then, you know, hey, it's about scoring points anyway. <coughs> So, make sure that you learn defense. And I'm kidding about it. And we got, we got great staff. You know, I'll tell you what, Pete, Pete's such a good person, a good guy, he attracts good people. And the guys on the staff, and we have fun with you, and we tease each other, and we're all best friends. And we know how to have fun, and not get to each other. And if we feel like we are, we pull off. Okay? I mean, I'm out there. They're stuffing us on the very first day they're stuffing us. I'm saying, you know, man, I'm coming from pro football. Here's what we did in pro football. Good play. All right. Next play. We just watch. Oh, you know, they, uh, rotate the fourth and go on in. Pete, Pete wants everything flying around. Which is, hey, that's more of my style anyway. Hey, I've been going three or four years. You know, my first week in Detroit last, I said, players call me college boy. I was always running back and forth. I was chasing plays like this. That's a good job, Wayne Orton. Good job, Cool. Good job, Cool. Good job, Jack. All right, hey, we're going to play that. Get in there. I watched the left tackle. And kind of, I didn't spread. I just kind of jogged behind. Watch what went on a little bit. Well, they're calling me college. Yeah, I thought this was 16 games. Four preseason games. That's 20. You get in the playoffs, 21, 22. Could be 24, maybe all the whole way. That's how you give a shit. Tell me how to cope. Tell me how to cope. All of a sudden, about the 14th game, I was standing there. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, I heard, hey, what's up, college boy? I said, oh, you doing good? Where's your juice? Ever ready, buddy? <laughs> Energize your buddy, whatever it is. Hey, I'm going. Good job. All of a sudden, it starts raining your damn energy. So I'm gonna tell you, practice is everything, and you gotta come to prepare to practice well, all right? Now, let's bring you guys up again. All right. When you work the screens, remove the stuff. Obviously, you can take this guy out here, and you can move in three different directions. You can move him here, this is a lightning one. And you can move him right to it, close the distance. This is what the aggressive part of it. You will try and close.
close the hole so that you guys don't have to run, but he will come as fast as he can, and then he'll try to take you right there so that you don't get outside, okay? All right? Or get the guys in right here. Those are three moves. You watch film and almost tell work the exact move that corner will do. Because you know what? Those guys don't work that stuff. They tell them all, hey, they see they go from you know, go turn it. They don't work it. The guy usually just stands here and slides over and thinks he's turning in. Or he runs straight in the field and thinks he's turning in. I'm telling you, you can get it. All you gotta do is find one screen on there. Those the players working on the exact move that that corner does. Long screen. Or that strong safety does. Long screen, depending on which way. Alright. So, what's the rules for this guy? Release flat for intersect point and run with what? Speed, full speed. Fast you can. Once you know that you can protect the intersect point, you take the inside Yeah. Take the guy's inside cover. Alright? Everybody got the rule? Okay. This guy's rule is simply this. He's the alley run. He is to run in the alley. And once he gets in the alley, he needs to turn up on the first defender he sees. And I don't care how he gets him, just cover him up. Cover him up. But I do want him running at pretty good speed also. The faster the guys run, the more intimidating they are to the defense. The slower they run, the more the defense can do it. And they make a mess. Everybody clear on that. So blocking in space is about running with speed. It's about running with speed. Okay, now, there is a point. You guys are saying, well, I don't know that somebody told me to chop my feet at one point. There is a point. You don't want to hit a guy running like elongated like this. So as you run full speed and you can tell what color his eyes are, so in other words, you ran right to his what? Right to his toes, then I try to pull my both feet through the guy. Got me? So in other words, run, 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 boom, boom. You got it? Just boom, boom. You get both feet on the ground. What? That's where all the power comes from. That's where the devastating blocks come from. Devastating blocks are not come from flamingos like this. Ain't no flamingos that ever, ever had a great block. Okay? More flamingos than men. Okay? More flamingos than we got knocked on their ass. Okay? What's your name? AJ? You guys are you start? You start? What year are you? You small? Not talking about that. He's your cousin? I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> Fred went out early. She didn't go out early. I know. You said, hey, hey, bro, how about some cat, right? Yeah. He'll be making some, hopefully. Uh, any questions on uh, on the uh, blocking and space stuff? Anybody got any questions on it? Yeah. Sinking your hips, dropping your hips. How, how are you teaching? Well, here, here's the time you have to resist, is that when, 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 you, run, when, you, when you do this, you're, you're doing it. When you, when you kind of work your feet to the ground, I call it pounding the ground. I always tell them, pounding the ground. When you block initially, just block them off, and you pound the ground with your feet. If we're in contact, you want both feet on the ground. Whenever you're in contact with somebody, you want both feet on the ground. So what you're trying to do is we're trying to get our both feet on the ground and drop our hips a little bit, okay? Well, when you're running full speed, you can, you know. Here's another thing, here's another drill you can do that will help us, all right? Okay. I don't do this drill. I don't do this drill because we do it in off-season. Teach it in off season, okay? But here's the drill, okay? Let's see if I can keep it for AJ. Come on, AJ. Stay right back. Direct back, buddy. Okay? Alright. Now, what you're going to do, you're going 
full speed, and right before you get this thing, I want you to chop the feet, all right? And then run the feet full speed, you get to me and chop your feet, and then you're there, you got it? So now, don't do it until you get right up on that back, so you gotta try to pull yourself up quick. All right, ready? No, you're not trying to hit me. That's all what you do, is chop your feet. And that means you're gonna be just like this. So when you get about to that white line, just short the white line. And then you spread this way. Alright? You coming to me and doing the same thing. You're right in front of me, do the same thing. Ready? Sit. Go and get a three more. Ready? Go! Keep on, let's go. Sit, go. There you go. Okay, now, he's not dropping his hips a whole lot. And we, what we do is we practice that because that's what you, that, that is such a football movement. It's ridiculous, is it not? How many times have you been in football? We break in, you know, I gotta do this, boom, boom, we gotta, you know what I mean? We've gotta come down to a collection like that. We do it a lot, right? But what you don't do, you do like we did with Vince Young. <laughs> that far away. That's what we did. That's where our freshman linebackers made a mistake. They were so worried about missing them, they did just like we just talked about. Those guys broke down. Close the ground, close the ground to your honor's toes, and then you do it. Got it? Got it? I've seen the film many times. All right, thanks. Now, that's a good drill. The other good drill is this. It doesn't necessarily teach a guy to drive space, but it can teach a guy some flexibility. So you have to run. So right here. Can't quite get the fingers on the ground. The more you make them do it, and if your if your signatures on that drill, the more they will, the more the guys will do it, the more they will get at it. And what you're doing is you're helping them get more flexible on their hips. Our off-season program is the best in the world. It is the best. So all the things we do, fellas, let me say this. You must teach guys to make their feet. Make with their feet. You give me a 500 pound bench presser, and I'm going to tell you, you can take them someplace else. I ain't interested in a 500 pound bench Okay? Hey, get up here. No, Alex, it's your turn. You sure and I got a relationship going in. Now, you understand why I asked you Remember what I said to you before? Whisper? Okay. Well, this is not going to be a sexual thing. Yeah, neither are two. Alright, you ready? Well, two can do what? He can pass it. Okay, now everybody's seeing it. There's your bench press for five. You want to teach your guys to get flat on their backs. The bottom of the pile. <laughs> I don't see how much I give a shit about the bench. I don't care about the bench. That's not what interests me. Yeah, I wanted to go and sit down. Don't be calling me after 11. <laughs> They bench. I want them to think with their feet. Every guy I've ever got that has been really, really physically strong. This is where you walk. So this is where you walk. It's all about. Think of his own body. He's thinking with his own body. Why? That's his dominant part of the body. That's where he thinks with it. Most of us, being male, think we're something other than that. <laughs> Is that not correct? Yeah, I think. You get a great that, it takes over. <laughs> My point is this. 
you got to learn to teach your body to think with the feet. Think with your feet. Think with your feet. Think with your feet. Think with your feet. Do you drill and help your feet. You want your parents to play better? Number two, number one. Can they improve? Absolutely. Absolutely they can improve. They can get a really good at using their feet. Jump and roll. Moving side to side. All kinds of things you can do. Hair drills, stuff like that. Move your feet, move your feet. You know what the best thing to help you move your feet is? Anybody know? What's the number one thing in feet? To help a guy move his feet back. What is it? Huh? Lose fucking weight! That's the number one thing. Lose weight! I know. I know. When I'm 260, my feet don't feel like they're really light. When I'm 230, I feel like I, I can just move all day long. Deuce, the two, it was 396 the day that I arrived. I said, man, it looks big. I'm going to say, wait, is it 396? Is it 390? What? <laughs> I mean, what am I, who gives a shit six pounds of 390? Is this thing 390 something? <laughs> Like, my God, you're just like throwing a lawn chair off the, off the Titanic and you lose one pound. You know? Hey, it doesn't make a damn bit of difference. So I told him, I said, you got to lose some weight. Lose weight. We got to get your feet going. Your feet, your feet, your feet. You want to learn how to block better space? You got to be able to move your feet. Okay. So, what do I got to do? You got to lose 55 pounds. 51. 55 pounds. Guess what? He was 352 the day fall camp started. He was 345 most of the season. He's now weighing 330. I saw him work out with the sport of the Eagles. He moved his damn feet. Better day. He went from being not being drafted to, hey, this guy's got a chance to be a free agent by the second game to, this guy is going to be drafted in the late round by the third game. By the fifth game, he was a middle round pick. By the seventh game, he, you know what, he may be one of the best guards in the country by the UCLA game. And thank God for UCLA, they were so nice for him. <laughs> <laughs> he just made news a lot of money. But the point is this, is that hey, Deuce had an exceptional game that game. Hey, all of a sudden, next thing you know, we're going to I'm going to tell you something. I want to know one of you guys can make your money grow like that. Zero. Million. In less than three months. From zero to a million in less than three months. And how did it all happen? Name the first way it happened. He lost the weight. He lost the weight. And what's the second way it happened? He's a great goddamn coach! <laughs> Sorry to say, I'm not going to see all that damn money either. But my point is, hey, this guy knew what he had to do. He followed the map and got it done. Yeah, he was okay? Make him lose weight. Do stuff that's really significant as far as moving your feet. That pull drill is really, really one of the best things I have for keeping your eyes on your target, move and hit on your target. Any screen drill, don't just set a bag out here. Do not set a bag out here. What is he practicing when you set a bag out here? That's what I want to know. Run hit the bag. This bag is a bag. Move it. Pick it up and move the bag. Up, forward, run it, up the foot. Hey, make him hit a moving target. Doesn't do you any good to set a bag there and not move. On game day, everybody's moving. Move the guy. If the bag's too cumbersome to work, then get those shields and have them work with those shields. Lump and get the shields. But do not practice something that doesn't happen on game day. So it goes back to that very part of the first slide. Evaluate your drill. Is it getting what I want done accomplished? Now here's how you evaluate it. Does it look like what I see on Friday? So when you see me do a pass pro drill, and my guys are kicking, now I want them kicking down the line, I want their shoulders working. That's what I want to see on Saturday. 
I don't want to see the foot turn their shoulders this way or getting their feet turned like that. I want the I want to pose foot and I want to I want to kick and I want to drag. I want to close and I want to drag. I'm always working the base. So close drag base, open drag base. I'm always in a base. Why? Because that's what I want on Saturday. That's what I'm gonna try to get. And that's the point of emphasis. Movement drill, pull drill. That's your point of emphasis. Get those guys moving. Any questions? Any questions? No questions? <coughs> no worries. All right. Anybody want to ask me something personal? Not you. All right, we're good? All right, I'm going to get you ready for the next session.
offseason with him. He has a real confidence about his ability to play this game, and he showed it. He's a rookie. Ah, he's a young guy. He's a rookie. He's a young, good quarterback. <laughs> I love it up here. Roethlisberger right down the middle. Touchdown. That's what happens Reimers when Reimers with the tight end. I don't know how he got that one in there. Well, I'll tell you, this pass is absolutely perfect. Jay Reimersma goes up. Now, Jay Reimersma, I mean, it's, it's kind of funny. Here's a big quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, at 6'5". Jay Reimersma was a quarterback when he played at Michigan. They moved him to tight end, and now he's been in the pros for a long time. But watch where this pass is thrown. Look at Reimersma. Great hands. That's on the back side of Reimersma. He puts a real nice move on Mike Peterson, a little out and up, and then goes and makes the play. Now, keep in mind, that's only his seventh catch and his second touchdown. Perfectly thrown by Ben. Deion Grant, the free safety, came across with a late shot trying to knock it loose and what? couldn't do it. Reimersma fell on the ball. When he was going down, the ball was in his gut. He just had, I think he's got the wind knocked out of him. Now, Coach Del Rio is going to want to challenge this right away to see if he had possession when he got into the end zone. Well, from our initial viewing of it, he did. Jacksonville is challenging the ruling on the field, the completed pass for a touchdown. Now, we'll have a chance to look at it a few times. You say if he fell on it, Paul, maybe it was loose. We'll check on the challenge by the Jaguars when we come back. Is it a touchdown or not? No. Monday Night Countdown, delivered by UPS, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Life is measured not so much by what you do as by what you do for others. For almost two decades, the people of Southwest Airlines have helped make the Ronald McDonald House a home away from home for seriously ill children and their families. Here's to the special spirit that brings us all together. The spirit of hope. You were drinking gungy water trying to blow my head. You were killing woman. Stop and lay my money down. Baby. Find yourself sleeping in the ground. If a skateboard can have an active suspension, if a 60 foot fire engine.